Welcome back. Today we will continue the manual handling assessment chart. Last time we completed the lifting part. Today we will be taking forward for the carrying and the team handling. So we remember that um, this particular tool that is manual handling assessment chart. We remember that manual handling assessment chart has three component. One talks about lifting, second talk about carrying and third talk about the team handling. In this particular uh, tool, we have varieties of uh, no, uh, hazard index, uh, hazardous element which we are going to get some kind of degree or severity categorized by number as well as by the color green, amber, red and purple. So, these are the uh, colors you have and we get the categorization out of these four colors. Now, let us understand that yes, this is for the carrying operation flow chart. So, it starts similarly as we did for the lifting, it start with the load weight and frequency that is the component A that has four specific categories green, orange, red and purple. Then second hand distance from the flow lower back ok how far you are away from your hand like from your lower back. So, are you holding the object close to your body or away from your body. So, if it is close definitely your CG is uh, near to your body and you have less risk. If you are holding the object little uh, away from your body then it is having high risk right. So, uh, that particular variable then uh, asymmetrical torso or load that means how uh, your angle is moved like the whole torso is moved in which direction either in left side or right side. Then uh, postural constraint grip on the load if the grip is good then you have less load if grip is bad or poor then it has more problematic it is more problematic and you will get more strain to uh, do that particular job floor surface carry distance how long you are carrying that object obstacles on the route if you have obstacles in your uh, route while going from one place to other place then you will find it difficult then last one is the environmental factors right. So, we have all these factors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, we have such 9 factors right. So, from that once we add these values like you know uh, these uh, these values ok depending on the scenario when we get this value is val if value is very high definitely that says that you know you need to do lot of intervention at various point specifically at the point of red zone at the point of red zone and purple zone. If it is in green zone then definitely it is good orange zone has some hazard. So, I am just giving the uh, no uh, for I want you to recall whatever we studied for the lifting. Now, let us go with the uh, this carrying thing. Now, the similar type of chart for load weight and frequency for carrying the things. So, the weight of the load on, uh, and the frequency of the carrying operation you have to get from this particular chart. So, how many times you are carrying per minute and per second and what is the kind of load you have. If it is less then everything is coming into this particular green zone that is Z0. If it is in orange zone then 4 uh, or we call it amber then red zone that is 6 and purple zone it is 10 fine. So, this is for carrying. Now, hand distance from lower back here for 
factor B, we do not have anything in purple color. So, it says that if anything beyond red, that means uh, presence of such posture or such situation or such context is really impossible to have in industrial scenario. So, that purple portion is not available in case of factor B or hand distance from the lower back. So, if you are very close, so upper arm vertical, your upper arm remains vertical. So, you are holding the object very easily, it is very close to you and the torso is upright. You, you are standing or walking with that particular load very straight. So, hand close to your lower back then G is uh, like its, its color is G and value is 0. Now, in case it is not, it has two more value that is amber zone. It says upper arm has some angle away from torso. So, the, the load is close to your body. However, it is not that close that you can keep your upper arm you know, uh, along your th with your torso. So, what is happening? You are holding little away from your body. So, if it is so, then amber zone or value is 3 or torso is somewhat bent, forward bent. So, it is so heavy that you know you are holding it. So, for forward bending and then you are carrying the object. So, this particular type of posture, you know this particular type of posture in that case your value of hand distance from lower back is 3 or the color is amber. The last one that is the upper arm angled away from torso and torso is bent. Both the cases it is away. So, uh, your upper arm is you know, forming an angle with your torso as well as you are bending. So, load is quite heavy or difficult to hold. So, such cases then uh, color is red and value is 6. As I mentioned in the lifting during discussing the lifting part that these values are from different uh, experimental laboratory uh, studies and from there only they you know, derive these numbers. So, you need not to worry about these values, these numbers. Whatever positions is coming accordingly you have to give these numbers. So, these numbers are all pre-computed. Moving to next uh, factor that is factor C asymmetrical torso or load. So, what it says that load and hand symmetrically in front of the torso. Load or uh, and the hand is symmetrical. So, you are holding it like this. So, you know load is not in uh, left side or right side. It is symmetrically present. So, it is aligned with your body midline. Then it is green or value is 0. Torso is symmetrical, but load is carried in one side. So, you are standing straight. However, your load is on either left side or right side. And some cases load not symmetrical, load if not symmetrical. So, those cases it, the value is 1 and the color is amber. So, uh, the last one is two handed carrying to the side. So, you are holding the object with two hand, but it is not in front of you. Because in such cases, suppose you are carrying a fencing, okay, such kind of thing. So, you cannot carry it in front, then your movement will get restricted. So, you are holding it in this side or this side. So, for such cases, so two handed you are carrying, you are carrying with two hand, but it the object is in such shape or size or position that you cannot carry in front of you. So, you have to take it in either side, either left side or right side. So, such cases it is the color is red and the value is 2. Then posture, postural constraint. If you do not have any postural cost constraint, then it is G that means green and 0. If it is restricted, then amber, 
a or value is 1 and severely restricted r or means red and 3. Now, here uh, which one I will say restricted posture and which one I will say severely restricted these understandings are purely based on the understanding of the researcher. Here it comes from your experience, your skill. So, what is there? Look for factors that force workers to modify their posture. So, look at those issues if so many factors are there which is actually directing the person to hold that particular posture definitely in that case it is severely restricted whereas if it is only one factor or two factor which can be possible there is a possibility to manipulate or you know uh, compromise somewhere those cases it is restricted posture and if no factor is there like you know it is freely movable the whole body is freely movable in that case it is no prop, uh, postural constraint. Now coming to grip the similar concept what we did with our uh, lifting thing that fit for purpose handle. So, the handle and the object whatever is uh, you are going to carry it is actually fit that for that particular purpose only that particular handle is being designed. So, it is very easy ok hand holds uh, matches to the size and weight of the load cylindrical handles or items the whole hand can wrap around comfortably like we hold our suitcase and all for all such cases it is g or 0 ok color is green and value is 0 now for the amber it has two different option one is handles or hand holes too small hand holes are there However, it is quite small. So, it is difficult for someone to hold it. So, you know the, there will be some restriction. So, maybe with full uh, full hand you cannot hold it. Maybe you have to do with three or you have to hold it like this or uh, you have pain over here. Okay. So, such cases hand. So, if it is uh, small or lack finger clearance or only the finger support is required to hold that particular object such cases it is amber or some cases where no handles or handholds but can be held underneath or has strap or loop handle somehow, somehow you are holding it ok. So, that particular type of case you can give amber or one or we can say it reasonable grip fine. Now, moving to next part that is the poor grip no handles or handhold area. So, no sack, uh, plastic bags and such cases rough slippery uh, with pressure points, uh, palm pinch, uh, palm pinch or fingertip grip or force used to keep items together. So, you know small small things you are holding it like this. So, such cases and irregular bulky or non-rigid cases, uh, non-rigid item, it will be poor grip that is red color and we will give the number as 2, fine. So, this way we will be calculating the values for grip on load. The next two component is floor surface and carrying distance. So, floor surface non-slip dry, clean, firm, le uh, no, level and undamaged. So, it is very clean floor surface. So, then it is uh, 0 very easy to understand this particular aspect. Mostly dry and clean or uh, reasonably firm or minor damage. So, 1 or amber, slippery. So, it is difficult for you to work on because you are actually carrying things right. While carrying if you have to maintain the uh, uh, your balance then it becomes very difficult for you to uh, hold the object and uh, maintain your posture it is lot of load on your whole body right. So, it is red or 3. The next is carry the distance how long what is the distance that you are carrying. So, between 
2 meter to 4 meter it is very easy it is you can really measure and get the value z, g and 0 between 4 meter to 10 meter amber or 1 uh, over 10 meter is it is it is red or it is 2. Obstacles on route so if you have obstacles in uh, while carrying the things then definitely you have to uh, give some value over there so if there is no obstacle it is flat clean uh, if slope is there then it is, that is gently uh, you know it's not very steep slope so those cases it is g and 0 one type of obstacle or steep slope so slopes are uh, you know little steep so you have to really be cautious while coming down uh, or going up and then uh, if the obstacles are there but it's not many obstacles one or two so those cases it is amber or two and uh, you know it somehow you have ladder at least two types of obstacles and difficulties uh, while carrying the things those cases it is three or red zone coming to environmental factors if there is no factor so uh, no influencing factor no factors means no influencing factors then it is zero if it is one factor then one if it is two or more factor then it is two or red so once we have all these value then what i suggest you go back to the original form okay you remember the original form again i will discuss the form after i discuss the team handling then uh, we will recalculate this value so once we have these values with us what we will do we will add the numbers also we will check what are the areas what are the factors among all these factors is in the red zone or is in uh, green zone uh, sorry uh, amber zone or purple zone so if anything is in purple zone definitely we have to have some kind of intervention for that if it is in, in red zone there also we need to do some kind of intervention very uh, you know immediately like you have to be very proactive to give that intervention and take it down at least till amber zone if not green at least still amber zone okay so this way we can use this particular uh, manual handling uh, chart for carrying and we can uh, improve or you can do the design intervention for the carrying job now let's let us move to the next part that is the team handling operation assessment guide the same method very very similar method uh, the similar factors even similar factors okay however here concern is it's not only one person is doing the job here two or more persons are doing the same job so if it is a load then they are lifting or carrying together the whatever we discussed in earlier two cases lifting and carrying it's a single operator's job here in team handling it is two or more operators job fine so let's understand here also you have very similar factors so load weight hand distance from the lower back vertical lift uh, zone how long uh, what is the lifting happening from uh, ground uh, uh, vertically from ground torso twisting and sideways bending postural constraint grip on the load floor surface carry distance obstacles on the floor uh, communication coordination and control it is a new factor that is present for the team handling what is happening suppose two persons or three persons are handling a same same uh, weight so what is communication is happening can they uh, take the instruction from uh, operator one 
from uh, by the operator 2 and 3 or whatever is hap you know instructed by 3 can they receive it properly. So, what is the type of communication is happening ok. So, in terms of uh, control and the communication this is the new factor and the definitely the old environmental factor. From all these factors we will come to know about what is what are the varieties of risk available for the manual handling uh, 